Now, that is going to be a very, very hard act to follow. Um, thank you for the um, intro. So, welcome. Uh, I open our awards with an acknowledgement of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation as the traditional owners on, of the land on which we meet. And I respectfully recognise elders both past, present and future. So this is my first year. So firstly, I acknowledged the legacy that Ray Argyle has left us, upon which I hope to build. Over his many years as president, Ray advocated tirelessly for directors, for their creative, moral and financial rights. Consistently, he has promoted Australian directors, pointing out to many in our sector the contribution that directors make to producing screen stories. Feature films, documentaries, television, commercials, interactive, online and digital. Directors are kinesthetic storytellers. They bring together the talents of many creative and complex people. They try to elicit the best out of them with the purpose of weaving a story, a story that may entertain, that may astonish, that may transform, illuminate and delight. It's a complex skill set that we embody. And I sound so earnest after Nazim. <laughs> um, Ray, in his efforts as president, sought to make explicit the qualities of working directors and their value. His crowning achievement, however, was the union accreditation of our guild. This was something achieved due to the efforts of many, but particularly Ray, Kingston and Frankel lawyers, Michael Frankel and Greg Duffy. This has laid a pathway for directors to make their skills necessarily visible to industry stakeholders. And this is making an impact. We're negotiating formal templates for directors' contracts with SPA, and today SPA have agreed, because of the pressure that Kingston has been applying to them, to take that process seriously and to start that negotiation um, in truth. Accreditation is also impacting upon negotiating changes to legislation around creative copyright, and we really hope that it will continue to have a positive impact. I can't see you, Ray, because I can't see anything, but thank you, Ray, wherever you are. Where are you? Somewhere? Up the back. Thank you, Ray. Um, <clears throat> Tonight um, is a celebration of the value directors bring to any piece of screen content, Johnny Depp included. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge our CEO, Kingston Anderson. Kingston, who, as well as campaigning for the rights of our members across really many, many issues, has developed the ADG's Directors Attachment Scheme. The AGD have a strong remit to help build the careers of our newer members and emerging directors across all platforms. Kingston has greatly assisted emerging directors to gain entry to industry as directors. Last week alone, we were able to place four directors' attachments. Lucy Gaffey on Mark Joffe's film about Alan Bond, Jessica Redenbach on Hide and Seek with director David Caesar, Katrina McKenzie and Brooke Goldfinch was chosen by Ridley Scott's um, production company, or by Ridley Scott himself, uh, to work as attachments on Alien Covenant. So each of these directors were chosen on merit and uh, with the final choice made by the production. And yes, they are all women, and yes, they are from uh, diverse backgrounds. The AGG has been very active sorry, has been active in the now very zeitgeist conversation around gender equity and diversity. We will continue to engage in this conversation. Last year, Ray Argyle, myself, Gillian Armstrong, Megan Simpson-Huberman, Rebecca Barry and Michaela Ledridger met and discussed recent statistics around women in creative leadership positions. Gillian and I reflected that when we started our careers, we really didn't want our work to be seen as um, a woman's film or a women's film. And Jane Campion and other female directors have spoken extensively to this. We wanted our work to be assessed on its own merit. After 30 years, however, it has to be acknowledged that the statistics around the world bear significant reconsideration by all of us, and we need to give a voice to this inequity. So the ADG's voice resonated, along with others advocating for gender equity and diversity 
And as many of you know, Screen New South Wales announced a target of 50-50 in development and production by 2020. And Screen Australia brought together a task force con to consult on their Gender Matters program and rolled out the Brilliant Stories, Brilliant Careers initiative. There were 452 applications made by women. So we hope to be part of a shift in the landscape and we'll continue to advocate for the inclusion of women directors and for greater diversity in who gets to make screen stories. <laughs> but as to quotas for women directors, US academic Michael Kimmel speaks about the benefits for men when there is gender equity. He cited that in countries where there is greater equity, there is also a greater level of overall happiness. More specifically, children perform better at school, women perform better at work, and men who do the dishes perform better in the bedroom. <laughs> Since I mentioned this to my husband, I have not been allowed in the kitchen after dinner for some time. But let's not lose focus. Tonight is a celebration of the diversity of director's brilliance in all its forms. And I would like to thank our sponsors, who I know Kingston is going to do in great detail. I'd also like to thank our volunteers, without whom we would not be able to host this event. So thank you, all of you. And um, I'd particularly like to thank Kerry Herman, who has hosted, who's put the event together, because she's done, you know, an incredible job. So let's put our hands together to thank Kerry. <clears throat> so um, please do have a wonderful evening, and let's celebrate ourselves, um, because no one else will. Because it's not just important, it's essential. And so now I'd like to introduce Jenny Tozy, who is our, our major sponsor. She's the CEO of Screen Victoria. Thank you.